Back in October of 2018, I made a video talking about the mysterious and strange development story of a little indie game known as Cube World. This game took the internet by storm when it first came to light in 2011, and it quickly exploded to be one of the most talked about indie games at the time. Developed by two independent developers, it was extremely promising, and thousands of people played the alpha and beta versions of the game. But out of nowhere, the developers would randomly disappear, and it seemed as if some other things were going on behind the scenes. That video covered the specifics of this strange story, and was honestly one of my favorite videos that I've ever made, so if you haven't seen it, go and check it out, I'll put a link in the description below, and then come back to this one. Anyways, a lot has changed with the state of Cube World since 2018, and it turns out that what really happened is even more disappointing than the years of mystery that originally surrounded this title. Cube World actually got released, and somehow this decision managed to be even worse than if the game were to be completely abandoned. So how exactly is this the case, and how did Cube World manage to be one of the most overhyped disappointments of all time? Was there a darker side to this story? We're going to be answering those questions and more in today's video talking about why Cube World was a complete disaster. To give you a quick rundown of the things that I mentioned in the last Cube World video, we have to go back to 2011 when the game was originally announced. Developed by a husband and wife duo known as Wolfram Von Funk and Sarah Von Funk, Cube World was originally created as a passion project. After some information about Cube World was shared online, gamers everywhere started to become interested in the project. Wolfram, who goes by the name Wale, and Sarah, who goes by Pixie, quickly rose to fame. They received tons of pre-orders for the alpha version of their project in 2013, and everyone who got to experience the game was really happy with what they saw. The hype continued to build until eventually, in July of 2017, Wale posted the last known update or screenshots of Cube World as we know it. I made my video in 2018, and that was the last that many people had heard. The Cube World situation was known as a strange indie disappearance, and a few years went by without people even expecting to hear from Wale ever again. The Cube World dream was officially dead. Then, out of nowhere, in January of 2019, Wale made his first public appearance in nearly two years. He posted a simple tweet that read, New Cube World screenshots incoming, and it showed an image from inside the game. The same game that everyone had completely lost hope for. The tweet quickly went semi-viral with over 5,000 retweets and 20,000 likes, and you can tell by the comments that people still had the same hype that they've been holding on to ever since the initial teasers all the way back in 2011. Directly after this, three more tweets were shared with more images of the game, and an explanation of flying around the map, resurrecting your character, and trading was shown to the public. These teasers came out of nowhere, and it definitely surprised people. But the strange thing was that there was still no explanation about what had been going on during the extended period of silence, and what the long-term goals were for the game. Fast forward a few months, and another series of tweets was made in July of 2019, this time showing off various aspects of the world. Once again, these tweets had quite a bit of positive reception. It seemed like half of Wally's followers were once again excited to see the progress on Cube World, and the other half was skeptical that these tweets actually meant anything at all. I mean, it had been eight years since the original announcement, so was this just another batch of tweets that would be followed by a disappearance, or was there actual progress being made? The haters would end up being silenced when, on September 6, 2019, Wale posted the biggest thing that he had ever posted about the game. In yet another tweet, he announced the official release of Cube World on Steam, scheduled for September or October of 2019. He received over 18.7 thousand retweets and 44.3 thousand likes in the span of a few days, which absolutely blows my mind. People did, in fact, still have hope that Cube World would be as amazing as the alpha and beta tests made it seem, and that Wale would pull through. Plus, after years of waiting, people finally received an explanation as to why he had disappeared. Wally posted on the official Cube World website explaining why he'd been so distant, and it all started from a DDoS attack early in the game's life. He stated that this attack traumatized him and broke something inside of him, and that he'd been dealing with anxiety and depression ever since. He had a fear that his updates wouldn't be good enough, and he stated that every time he wanted to release one, these fears made him decide not to. At the end of this post, he mentioned that he was a perfectionist, and that even with this mindset, he thought that the upcoming release of Cube World was fun and that people would enjoy it. 
This post garnered quite a bit of attention, and many of his fans seemed to be sympathetic and encouraging about the situation. It felt as if there was, for the first time, some actual clarity regarding the game's release, and the hype that had been coming in in waves increased to the point of no return. If Cube World didn't actually come out this time, things were going to get ugly. Cube World would launch on Steam on September 30th, 2019 to an astonishing peak of 19,000 players, which sounds like a success at the very least. But after diving in past the surface level, the idea of success began to disappear. A majority of the reviews that were coming in were negative, which instantly gave Cube World the mostly negative tag on Steam. There were a lot of complaints, and ultimately the community was not happy. People felt scammed, and like the game had been downgraded from the alpha and beta versions that appeared so many years ago. The new mechanics just didn't make sense, and things that people loved so much were simply removed and never mentioned. The cool randomly generated dungeons and castles were removed, NPCs were downgraded, and most importantly, items were region locked. Meaning, you could spend hours grinding for good gear just to be able to not use it when you enter a new region. It seemed like a way to stretch out a relatively short game to try to make players play it for longer periods of time. The game felt like a dull downgrade from the previous versions, and it was quickly made clear that people were not okay with this. To make matters worse, alpha players could only claim their free version of the game on Steam for a short period of time. If they didn't go to the Cube World website within a set amount of time, they would lose their right and would have to buy the game again themselves. In fact, the site that was used isn't even around anymore, so people who don't currently have the game now won't be able to get the copy they paid for. But honestly, do they even really want it? You may be asking, why would Wale release a game that hasn't seen the light of day in years without any form of testing? But believe it or not, Wale did have a beta test. A few days before the launch, he announced a closed beta for people to be able to check out the game and test out some final kinks. The beta went live and the complaints quickly started rolling in. Replies to Wale's tweets consisted of a large amount of disappointment and straight up outrage. Over the next few days, many of the game-breaking and visual bugs would be fixed and announced in yet another series of tweets, but many of the major things that people were complaining about were straight up ignored. After a few days of these fixes, with complaints still being given in the replies to each of the bug fixes announcements, the game was released. Wally posted a final tweet on September 29th that stated, Release time is 9am PDT, 1800 CEST. Once again, a majority of the replies were harsh insults about Wale and the state of the game, mixed in with some words of encouragement and hope for the future. Many of the people were taking things way too personally, and the insults were unnecessary and unwarranted to Wale as a person. But it was undeniable that the game was not in a good spot and was most definitely not going to perform well when it launched. Then the next day came around, the game launched, and the terrible reviews and hostility started pouring in. And that was it. That announcement tweet was the last that anyone had heard from Wale. No plans have been announced to fix the huge issues with the game, no communication has been taking place about the state of the game, and Wale's official blog has been removed. It appears as if he released the game as a last ditch effort to get everyone off his back about it, and vanished into the abyss once again, never to be heard from. From a professional standpoint, this was not a good look. If Wale really did want nothing to do with the game, he should have just left it abandoned in its alpha state with the ambiguity and mystery living on forever. At the very least, if he merely wanted to publish the game to get it off his chest, he should have made it free to play. Charging people and then vanishing, regardless of the reasoning, is not okay. It's extremely understandable if he wanted to leave, especially with all of the harsh insults and toxicity, but don't leave with the people's money. Give refunds, remove the game, or make it free to play. That's all it takes. When I was talking about this situation with one of my friends, he did give an interesting counterpoint that I want to bring up in this video. Is it actually right for people to be mad about this situation? Considering that Wally never really promised anything with the game, and merely only teased new features, do people have the right to be mad at his creation? I mean, ultimately, game development is a form of art, and maybe this is what he saw as the final vision. Yes, people don't have to enjoy it, but do people have the right to be mad? I don't really know my thoughts on that, but I did hear it from my friend, so I am curious what you guys think. Let me know in the comments about that claim. The story of Cube World has been an interesting one, and it lives on in gaming history as an iconic failure that leaves a bad taste in people's mouths. I have little to no hope that anything is going to happen with this game, and I highly doubt that we'll see any other communication from Wale. 
Cube World, after years of development, hype, and mystery, was an absolute tragedy. What are your thoughts on the story of Cube World? Do you think it was released as a final cash grab? Do you think it's as bad as everyone says it is? Let me know in the comments. Anyways guys, that's gonna be it for today's video, so I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, feel free to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. I will see you guys next time, and peace.